up, everybody? This is Jay Tom Gunter, owner of Grapes and Sand Publishing. Welcome to another episode of Wine Tasting with Giants. And I know it's been a while. I've missed you guys. Uh, we definitely have a giant here. My boy, Phil Kang. He's more like a brother to me. Uh, he's like, this is my dog. Um, I'm so happy to have him on the show. But before we get into why he's on the show, of course, on Wine Tasting with Giants, we always focus on the wine first. So we're going to let's go ahead and break down this wine a little bit. Today, just so you guys know what we're sipping on, uh, we're in Uruguay. And we're talking about the Pisano 2019 tonight. This is the Rio de los Pajaros. Uh, this is their reserved. And I'll show you guys that. And I'll put it a, a better picture in the um, in the video when I edit later. But yeah, uh, I love tonight. I've had a bunch of them. And um, it's a great that a lot of people don't know about out of Uruguay. Uh, it's one of my favorites just because of the balance of big, bold body, but also with like a lot of uh, structure going there too. So. Let's get right into this wine. Uh, before I get into it, though, really quick, Phil, thanks for being on my show. I appreciate you being here with me. My dog. Oh, <laughs> and, and also, uh, he's a wine guy, too, so this is going to be fun to go back and forth with another wine guy. That's actually not why he's on the show, but going back with another wine guy is always fun with me. So uh, on the nose on this wine, what do you get, bro? So the nose is definitely interesting because, you know, you, you, you read Tanat you expect like old world cab expression and definitely you get those like signposts where it's like a little bit of red, a little bit of black. But then to me on the nose, it has this weird thing where, I mean, it's not weird, but it's, it's uh, kind of unique to me where it has a lot of cooked kind of jammy expressions of those reds and blacks. So like I get like a cooked cranberry jam, okay. like a, oh, yeah. like a blueberry, a blackberry sauce, you know, not just like the fresh um, bright, expressions but definitely this is like cooked down it's a little bit sweet you know mm -hmm. kind of like a uh, jammy like or not jammy but stewed like uh san Giovese out of tuscany type of stew mm -hmm. got you got you that's that's always my benchmark yeah that's always my benchmark for like um stewed uh fruit uh, on a on a nose on a on a wine red wine because they tend to be really they they vary uh where they're at in tuscany as far as the the level of stewiness on the fruit so that's a good call. Yeah. yeah, I was expecting, you know, it was surprising because I was expecting more fresh, bright. Mm. But I mean, I, I'm loving, I'm loving the nose. There's like a little definitely. bit of spice here too, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, definitely oak. It's been a while, so yeah. I can't, I couldn't say, you know, what kind of oak it is. But uh, I mean, is there like a little bit of vanilla on there? Like maybe even the slightest hint? Maybe like a, a, a slight bit of vanilla here. It feels like, I'm not sure. This sounds like, this smells like uh, French oak. French oak. I mean, that would make sense, right? Given the, yeah. where it's from and the style, right? Mm -hmm. There's also like a little bit of like a clove thing going on here on the nose. And something mm -hmm. like herbal, like definitely like green herbs. Yeah, I, I get like um. Like a little bit of like almost like dark chocolate or toffee. Yeah, definitely. I like that. Uh, the call to the cranberry is really something that jumped out at me immediately. It's kind of like a, a a leather mitt right here too, like a brand new leather mitt though, like not an older one. Yeah. This is quite comp complex on the nose. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it now, so I can get on your level. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been a while since, I, since I've been drinking wine because it's hard to drink wine and enjoy it by yourself, right? I feel like the wine is only good as the people you're sharing it with. So, you know, I don't uh, like you to quoted it by that. Ah, yeah, that's a quote you, you put in my book. I like that. <laughs> I like quote, that. Man. Hey, speaking yeah. of books, like, you like my shirt? Is, I love your shirt. It got my black good, right? wine on. It looks good, bro. I haven't so seen that, that in a long time. It looks really, first really good. On yeah, you were like, you were my first buy. You know, you've always been really supportive, man. Appreciate you for that. You got to put the money where the mouth is, right? If you're saying, sure. like, hey, I support your business and you don't, like, buy their stuff or you ask for discounts, I mean... Oh, the discounts. Oh, my God. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I know you got a business. Give me a discount. It's like, come on, man. You know, this is how I break bread. Did you just go off? Oh, there you go. You're back. Yeah, sorry about that. I got a, okay. got a call. <laughs> All good. All good. Happens to me a lot. But one thing that I, I love about this wine is that the nose, so we talked about the nose, and there's a lot of jammy, like cooked, 
uh, mm-hmm. stewed stuff. But on the taste, on the palate, it's still like super fresh, super bright. Yeah. Great acidity, mid, mid tannins. Like, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think it's I mean, like it's California style, but it comes off way different. Yeah, it definitely comes off more European on the palate. Like, it's very angular compared to what it was smelling like. Um, there's a great, there's great tannin here. There's, I mean, they're firm, but they're, they're very, um, they're builders. So like, you know, sometimes we like say, for example, Nebbiolo is my benchmark for tannin, natural tannin in a great, cause they mm-hmm. tend to have the highest period. And, um, there's specific Nebbiolos. If you're looking at Barolo, you have the highest type of tannin and those things are not builders. They're just tannin. They're right. When you drink a young Barolo, it's like, ah, you know, it's, it's real tight. If you drink something like Barbaresco, it tends to be a little bit more of a builder. So they still get to, they're still considered high tannins, but they don't, they're not as sharp. They're, they're not as angular. This one has those tannins there, um, but they're not sharp or angular. They're more of a builder. So I'm catching that on the, on, like on my gums and my teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it just, where the tannins kind of like take you to the acidity right there to like hold your hand and take you further. Like this is exactly. fantastic. Long ass, long ass finish too, bro. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm digging this. This, uh, the, the cranberry is the thing that's kind of tap dancing all the way down your palate. Like you're just like this, this, ta- this cranberry is hitting all the points from the beginning to the end. Um, definitely getting like a little bit of more herbal and earthy notes in the mid palate to the finish. Um, that spice is there on the finish too, that I'm catching. Like it's more of like a cardamom, I would say. Mm-hmm. And the leather is becoming more pronounced on the nose too, by the way. Yeah, this is this is a fantastic one. Yeah, especially um, for, for the price point. Like this, this drinks like a fifty dollar bottle, but I think I agree. It's like seventeen. It was seventeen. Yeah, we. So by the way, guys, we got this at Total Wines. Both of us. It's seventeen dollars. Um, and I and he's right. I think this is tasting like a forty fifty dollar bottle of wine. This is an absolute steal. You guys get your head, get a chance to get your hands on to not this specific bottle. Go do it because you will not be disappointed. And if you are. I want to hear from you. I didn't make the wine, but I do love the wine. <laughs> and I don't mind being wrong uh, for your palate if you hit me up in the messaging and stuff. So, yeah, this is wonderful, man. Mm-hmm. Well, so, uh, if we were to rate this really quick. Yes. Because I've been I've been on this rating thing, and I, I I never did it before, but in the last year, I've decided I'm just going to start rating wines just so people know my benchmark and what I'm looking for and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll ask your rating first. If you were to rate this wine, what would you rate it on a hundred percent or a hundred uh, scale? Hundred scale? Yeah. Let's see. On my own personal scale, I would say that, like overall, I'm going to combine price into my rating. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is at least like an 89, 90, right around there, like A minus, B plus. Mm-hmm. Like this mm-hmm. is. This is good, man. Especially for the price point, it's it's so unexpected. Um, especially because a lot of people, you know, like I, I'll just be straight up honest. I had to look up what Tanat was. Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't know about it. Yeah, I'm, and it's such know, an interesting drink. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, the tonicity, the acidity, the fruit expression, totally unexpected. And for the price point, like this is this is like the bottle you bring to like the barbecue or the picnic or the party mm-hmm. and people are just like, Oh, what is that? I've never heard of that. And then they taste it. We're like, Whoa. <laughs> That's real. You know? Yeah. This is outstanding, bro. Um, if it was up to, if it's on me, I'm going to go a little step higher. I'm going to say 90 plus to 91 points on this one. I really, really dig this wine. This is a, a palate pleaser for real. And um, maybe I'm just a little bit more bullish on it because it's the company that I'm drinking it with. You know, I got my boy here, so because I'm drinking, I'm, I'm in a good mood. Maybe it's putting me in a good mood and wanting to rate this a little higher. But this is outstanding to me, and I recommend everybody at least go try it for seventeen dollars. This is still, yeah. All right. Um, so one question for for you, Jayton. Yes, so, sir. What are you pairing with this one? I got gotcha. some ideas, but I'm sure that people would love to hear what you think about it. So I think this would really go good with like uh, barbecue pork. I think barbecue pork would this would kill. Um, I think some burnt ends, this would kill. Um, Cause I think, I think that smoke, anything that has a little bit of smoke in it, I think this is gonna love it. Um, if I'm going steak, I would say more of a ribeye would be great with this. Um, I could even say going to burger. Like if you wanted to go like a, a nice little uh, 
like fatty mm. ass burger. Ooh, yeah. Like, go, go really well with that too. But those would be my three. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm gonna right there with you. Um, I was thinking that this, this would be great with, you know, my parents from Korea, I'm from Cincinnati, but you know, we, we represent for Korean food and Korean culture. Yeah. Definitely, this would go good with Korean barbecue, man. Oh, like, yeah. Kalbi, you know, like that's like a soy sauce ribs or like mm -hmm. a, a spicy pork barbecue, like with gochujang, like this would be mm -hmm. fantastic. Fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. Up through that fattiness, mm -hmm. it has the fruit to carry through. And like you said, the smoke to go with that charcoal, because you know, you want to have that Korean barbecue on the charcoal. This, this will take like, this will, this will change any skeptic. You know, like this is fantastic wine. And I like hearing that. Airing, I think, would, you know, that, that'll convince some people who are like, oh, I don't really like wine. But those people haven't had a, a superb pairing yet, in my opinion. And this I one changed some minds and some hearts. I love it. I love it. Well, cheers, bro. Cheers to you being on the show. And we're going to get into it, guys. There's a reason why I got filled on this show. Um, one thing I've never discussed on this show is real estate. And you know me, I'm always looking for my friends. My friends are really cool, right? My friends do a lot of cool stuff. And um, I try to highlight things that I think that are really cool or industries that maybe have not gotten talked about a lot uh, on my channel. I like to highlight those and, you know, over a glass of wine. And so that's what I'm doing here. Phil is in the real estate business. And um, like um, with you being in the real estate business, Phil, um, I know you differently than everybody else. I know you as a person who's a musician. You know, I know you as a person who's a wino like me, you know, like we, mm -hmm. you were in the wine industry for a long time and you did bartending and stuff, uh, like kind of like this free spirit. What made you, what was your entry into real estate? Like what made you go that, like a totally opposite end from where you were at prior before? Well, you know, it seems like it's something that's completely the opposite end, uh, but actually it's, it's kind of similar. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess I'll start off with how I got into it. You know, mm -hmm. I was just thinking, logically like okay you're buying a house for yourself commissions are like two and a half percent three percent so if you take the classes educate yourself get the license pay for all that that's still going to be below the two and a half to three percent that you're going to pay a realtor to to help you out mm -hmm. so i figured you know myself i want to have properties in my name i want to have properties for my family and for you know for my loved ones so mm -hmm. for me it, it just made sense to get that um, and then it kind of just took off because, you know, you know me, I'm a hustler. So when, before I got my license, sure. right after my test, you know, I'm waiting for the physical license to come in. Mm -hmm. One of my close friends told, let me know. It's just like, oh, my mom's thinking about selling. I was like, well, I need to call her right now. Give me her number. And, <laughs> and it's, you know, it took off from there. So um, I just been hustling that. But uh, I mean, to get back to like how it's similar, like it's a service industry job. Mm -hmm. You're just paying for playing for higher stakes now because we're playing for, you know, instead of, you know, a $500 check and you're trying to get 30%, we're trying to get 3% on millions of dollars, you know? Understood. So Understood. one transaction, that's 30 grand potentially Ooh. before you, you know, before you pay your people and your team. You know, I got, mm -hmm. a team. I got people I got to pay before I take my money home. So I don't get that whole 3%, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is worth it. They... They make me look good. And so they deserve to get paid, you know, just like any other team that you have that's solid. You know, you got to pay your people. You got to take care yeah. of them. I feel that when you so when you were getting because, I mean, you moved down to Southern California. How mm -hmm. did you get like you? So you you brought all the skills, everything that you came from. You got up here and you went down to Southern California. You can't even if you pass the test, you don't just jump into the industry. How did you get in? Like who was the uh, like who, what? um who embraced you, who kind of took you under their wing and was like, yo, I got you. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to teach you a lot about real estate. How'd that happen? I mean, honestly, it was similar to how you mentored me in wine, you know, uh, just a chance meeting with somebody who was like-minded um, and we just kind of clicked, you know, <clears throat> I had an amazing, I've had amazing mentorship in my life. I've been extremely blessed uh, with the opportunities that have been presented to me um, through my mentors uh, and, you know, my friends. Um, you know, I'll give people a quick, you know, past rundown of how we met, you know, I was working at, at Bar Norcini and SF, you know, and, uh, Jay Tan came in one day and, you know, he, uh, he just, he, 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 he loves wine, man. He's so passionate about wine. It's, it's literally infectious. 
and I got infected. Um, and so it's something that, you know, since then, I mean, that was like, what? Ooh, man, probably like a... 10 years ago. So yeah, it's gotta be damn Phil. I just thought about that. It's been about 10 years. Yeah. So wow. You know, your, 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 your passion of wine infected me, you know, in the good way. And so, you know, I've, People are drawn towards people that are passionate and that passion, you can't, you can fake it, right? But yeah. people can tell. People can tell when it's real, when, you know, when it's fake, you just gotta, you just gotta smell it and taste it and you know, you know? And so I was fortunate to just meet somebody, you know, a mentor uh, in real estate. And I just told her, you know, like, look, I'll do whatever it takes. I wanna be your apprentice. I will hold your purse. I will carry it to meetings. You know, <laughs> I will open doors for you. I will, if there's something too heavy, I'll pick it up. You know, whatever you need, I will handle that for you. I just want to be around you so I can learn. That is the fill I know. <laughs> that is the fill I know. Well, shout out to my mentor, Sandra Mitri. Uh, you know, she, uh, she, she showed me the ropes. She took care of me. And, you know, I would not be here without her help and without her mentorship. Because, you know, in this game, a lot of people, they're afraid to mentor people, especially ones that they see like, oh, this person could be my com competition. Yeah. You know, if I raise this tiger up, well, now there's two tigers in the jungle. Yeah. You know, but she she had no fear. She's like, I'm going to raise this tiger up and this tiger is going to be loyal to me. And that's exactly what happened. So, you know, she, she took a chance to mentor, you know, somebody who could have, you know, sucked. I could have been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I got to represent what? Sandy. You know, she's she's a great human being, and I'm lucky to have met her, just like I'm lucky to have met you. Oh, I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. Well, we're talking about you were just talking about passion. You can't fake it. Is real estate your passion now? Like, is that a passion of yours, or are you still kind of just? Is it something that you uh, are using as a means to an end, or is it really something that you really love? I love the end result. Gotcha. You know, um, the the intricacies of real estate, you know, that that is what it is. It's extremely difficult and mainly the result at the end where you kind of win, you know, my clients, they get the home they wanted. They get either the money <laughs> they, they needed, you know, to do yeah. what they want to do. Um, and then I get paid a livable wage, you know, as a result of that. So mm -hmm. that part of it's extremely satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, the part I like most about it is, you know, knowing that doing this, I can, I can try to create some generational wealth, not only for myself, but for my family members and you know, to take care of them as well. Um, you know, anything in life, it's the passion is important, but the work and the results also need to be there. I think, in equal amounts you know to make that work it's like you know you've been hustling this for you know over 10 years since before i met you you know yeah i feel like we're both on the cusp you know it's just like you just need that little extra push you know a little bit of outside sauce you know to make it happen so you know i feel like uh you know anybody that's in the game um <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> People will be hitting me up right now, but yeah. I Bro, mean, it's all good. Yeah, so it's just uh, the work, man. The work, yeah, has, the to, work. has to be there. The effort has to be there. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. I'm, what I'm doing right now, you know? I feel that. I feel like right now is, and you, you're onto something. I think that we are both on the cusp of something big, and we both work hard. Like I told, I was talking to you off camera. I was telling, telling you that you're one of the few people that I think work as hard as I do with everything. Like I'm always working and you're one of the same, you have that same mindset. Like I'm going to get what I need to get done regardless. And like, I think that's a, I mean, it's one thing to be passionate and love to do stuff, but I think the, the work sometimes gets overlooked um, to like, cause you have to piggyback on that passion with hard work or you're never going to get to where you want to get to. You're just never going to get there. Um, you'll get close but you, it won't be close enough to satisfy your passion, I don't believe. I think you have to put the work in. And yeah. so with with you being coming from Northern California, there's a quick little segue. With you coming from a, um, from Northern California, after living in Southern California, moving back down to Southern California, how is the real estate uh, game out there, like as far as um, 
Like, is it booming right now? Is it a little slow? What's going on in Southern California in your specific area? And let them know where you're at too, so that they can, you know, look you up and stuff. So I'm in Orange County. Uh, I also do anything in SoCal, you know, south of LA or LA is yeah. south of LA. Um, it's tough right now. A lot of people qualified to buy, but they're priced out of the market. You know, there's not a lot of inventory. So, you know, anything below a mil, it's basically, it's just a fight now. We mm, fight. Wow. Wow. Yeah. A lot Poor of people I, come I, in. Cash. Like I got people qualified up to a mil and they can't find anything, you know? So it's tough. Ooh, that's right. um, we're, seeing, we're seeing more inventory right now. Um, let me just get like finance nerdy for a second. So go, go for it. Sometimes um, when a recession happens, you'll see the bonds invert. We're very close to that, seeing that right now. So that's a sign that there's a recession going on and we're very close. Um, so we'll see how that uh, affects the real estate market. Also, you know, the interest rates have been going up. So that's kind of putting people, you know, outside of uh, the affordability as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much stuff going on, you know, and uh, the thing about real estate is that anybody can do it. Like literally anybody can study and take that test and pass that mm -hmm. test and do it. But do you want to do it? <laughs> 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 you want to put that responsibility on yourself for 3% of a, what you're going to spend for 30 years, you know? So, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear like, you. That's crazy. My joke is that I tell people is like, they're like, well, I could do what you do. And I'm like, you absolutely could. But the 3% you pay me, that's the fee that you pay to know that you can sue somebody if something goes wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pretty much. It falls on you. Yeah. So that, that responsibility, I eat that responsibility, you know? So that's my part. You know, I, I come with the team. I come with the people, you know, you need somebody to fix something on your house. I come with yeah. that. You need somebody to market your property. I come with that. You know, you need somebody to uh, help you with anything related to that. I come with that, you know? So, wow. You don't just pay for me to do one thing for you. You pay for my experience and my contacts, just like in any other business. You know, if someone comes to you, they don't just pay for you to talk about wine. They pay for you, all your knowledge, of everything to do with the industry, not yeah. just wine. You know, like, you, you know, you're an encyclopedia. You got your contacts. You got the people yeah. who work for you just because, you know, they know your, your reputation and your skill mm -hmm. and your passion. And, you know, so that's what people hire me for. So with your team, you have a team. Um, how many people are on your team? I mean, it, it varies. You know, I got all my vendors. Okay. I got all my contractors. You know, I got my office assistants, you know, my marketing people. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, oh, you're, you're my customer. So we're going to just do this same thing we do for everybody. It's like, we got to have gotcha. a meeting. We got to talk. We got to decide, you know, what you need, what your objectives are. And then based on that, we can put together a plan. Got you, got you. That makes sense. And so the reason the reason I asked is, does this mean that this has allowed you to be able to spread out, out outside of Orange County because you have the team now? Because you can like you can go pretty much anything of uh, Southern. Um, you said like, are you in San Diego too? Or I, I will consider doing San Diego. Um, okay. So there is some kind. There is a little bit of restriction to that, and the restriction is okay. based by myself. I do know agents that, you know, mainly operate out of Southern California that will go to Northern California. For me, when I consider my client's best interests, uh, I would most likely refer them to somebody that I trust in a different area. Down there, got you. Uh, I would try to put the greed aside because to me, like I'm not an expert in the different laws and the different ordinances that exist in the Bay Area versus Southern California. Mm -hmm. And so for me to take that, you know, that job or that offer of a, of commission, you know, really when I'm thinking about the client's best interest, their interest would be better served by somebody who's more of an expert in that area. You know, mm. I don't want to make a decision based on my greed that could, you know, come back and bite my clients, you know, um, the gotcha. best service that in that case, I would consider, you know, to pass that along to somebody that I trust up there rather that than- makes sense. 
try to be greedy and just get more money and, you know, possibly open myself up to liability and my mm-hmm. clients up to liability, you know? So there's that kind of restriction that I kind of place on myself, you know, um, cause you know, there's agents out there with like 20 years experience, 15 years experience, you know, 50 mm-hmm. years experience, you know, I've been in the game for five years or excuse me, for four years now, almost four years. Mm-hmm. So I'm a relatively newer agent. I did have like, you know, pretty hot start mm-hmm. and I'm trying to carry that momentum, but I try to be uh, objective and realistic about my own abilities and skills because, you know, uh, no matter how old I get, no matter how good I get, I'm still going to need mentorship. I'm still going to need somebody to talk to, you know, who's more experienced, who knows yeah. more than me. Because if I assume that I know the most, like, that's just foolish, you know? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Like, I, still, I still talk to you about when I need Rex for wine. I'll still reach out to Jayton, you know? Like, hey, what's, yeah. the, what's, the, what's the move for this? I want to impress some people, you know? I'll reach out to yeah. Jayton, you know? Like, I, I, I consider that I know a decent amount of wine, but why am I not going to have a reach out to a resource that I know is, is stronger than me, you know, that that would be prideful. And I think that's kind of dumb, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, and, I, and you know, I'm always here for you. So I don't care. Like, regardless, you could always hit me up, but I'm always down to help out. Um, so there's all, there's all these different types of real estate too, man. Like there's residential, you know, like which kind of uh, real estate are you in right now? So I focus on residential. Um, I'm trying to learn commercial. Perfect. Commercial is its own thing where now you need another mentor. And you, need, of course. I, <laughs> you need to hold another briefcase or purse for a number of years <laughs> and, you know, follow that person to meetings, follow that person around for free and just do whatever they need to show yeah, them, that, right. you know, hey, I, I will help you. You putting me on your team is a benefit to you and your team and your clients, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll show you my worth through my work, you know. Because you know, the work is just like the wine or the music, you mm-hmm. know, it's, you can talk it, you can talk a real good game until you got to play that music in front of people or you got to taste that wine in front of people, you know, like if, if you're going to blind in front of somebody, it's like all the, all the lies, all the BS is off the table. Cause now you got to perform for real, yeah. lot, you know, so speaking work, of music, that's where I, I show it, you know, well, speaking of music. Are you doing any music anymore? Or are you, are you playing a little bit, at least for yourself to keep your chops up or like yeah. what's going on with the music? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I just play for myself, you know, uh, I'm just practicing, you know, just for enjoyment to keep myself yeah. sane. but, uh, man, but the music to, to play where the level that I want to play at, it would be a full-time job. Like I would have to, to retire and just, just be able to focus on music, you know? So that's the goal. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. It's a dream and a goal for now. I was about to say, maybe that's maybe that's what you're working towards right now. Get yeah. all this, like, do what you build up your little nest egg so that you can really do it. I mean, being honest, let's 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 be real honest here. I think that's the same the same thing I'm doing right now. I'm do, I'm trying to build up these businesses, trying to build up multiple streams of income so that I can pull back and I can just write. That's all I really want to do is write. I don't want to do. I mean, I love wine and I love everything else I'm doing, and I'm passionate about all this stuff. But my Biggest thing I love to do is write. And so if I could just travel anywhere I want to and be able to write from wherever I'm, I'm at, that would be gold for me. That would be it. So I'm figuring that's what you're trying to do right now, too, is you're building up your little money, you're getting your family straight, and you're going to be like, okay, now I can play music wherever I want to do, like whenever I want to, wherever I want to, and just enjoy that lifestyle as a, being a bohemian music person. Absolutely, man. And, you know, um, the example I like to tell people about, oh, man, I, I wish I remembered this guy's name. He, he's a NFL player mm-hmm. and he's, he's a, he, he's a player in the NFL. You know, he's, he said, you know, the NFL is a job to me. Mm-hmm. This is so I can take care of my family and my mm-hmm. family's family. And when I'm gone, they're still going to be taken care of because of the work that I did on the field. But do I love playing football? I did at one point, but now it's a job, you know, so you can have, you know, a job at the highest level of the game, but it's still a job, you know, and then mm-hmm. you can have passions outside of that, even if you're amazing at, you know, in our case, you know, real estate, wine, you know, mm-hmm. passions outside of that. It doesn't invalidate what you're so good at and what you do, mm-hmm. to bills, you know, yeah. Because, you know, there can be a lot of help and education and mentoring in the things that, you know, you do for work. You know, you can, like you did for me, you know, you enrich my life. By sharing your thank passion you. for me. You no, know? thank you, man. And so I imagine that, you know, 
you, you, you're able to do that, you know, with, with this channel and hopefully, you know, some, some other people can, you know, can learn that they love wine like I did. <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. I love it. So thank you for that, by the way. I appreciate that. You've always been really, uh, you're, you're one of the few people that pay it forward and also like appreciate, uh, you know, people who have tried to help you out too. you like, you're very, it, it's, it's rare that you run into people, uh, especially us men, because we can be very prideful. Um, and so we feel like even though we got help from something, from someone, uh, we don't like to share that we did that. I, re I really appreciate you always like saying, you know, that kind of stuff about what like me and your relationship. I don't think, I mean, honestly, I don't think I did that much. I think um, I just, you know, shared with you my passion and uh, we kind of just became friends about like about other stuff, but also about wine. Um, and you're one of the people that I, I would call up or hit up about like, oh, we got this wine thing going on over here. Or do you want to be part of this? Or do you want to come into Eno and drink some wine with us? Because we're going to be tasting all these different wines. Um, I just think that that was that was fun for me. But I appreciate you always sit, like paying me respect for like being around for you back in those days when it came, came to wine. I really do. Um, speaking of that, though, are, do you have any future plans um, for real estate, your real estate career in the next like three years i'm not gonna say five years because maybe that's too far out but maybe in three years is there like a set plan or you're just kind of figuring it out as you go well the next three years um right now I'm, i've been taking a bunch of tests i've been studying so I, I go to my my financial planning office in the morning and then after that i go to the real estate office and then after that i come home and study uh i'm Ooh. studying for my certified financial planner. Okay. Um, allegedly, from people that have taken the bar and that test, this test is, the CFP is harder than the bar in California. Um, so that gives me a lot of, uh, of worry and stress. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, you know, that, yeah. that, that weighs over me, but mm -hmm. it kind of excites me in a sick way too, where I see it as a challenge that mm -hmm. I wanna overcome. Um, so, you know, I want to be able to do that in the next three years. In, in June, I'm going back to school. So in two years, I should have my degree finished. I'm going to go back, get my revenge on my, my business degree. Then, <laughs> I love it. You know, in the third year, I should have the CFP exam studied for and passed. Um, you know, I want my mom who is, she's born in 57. So that makes her what? Uh, she is, look, she, my mom's age, so she's 65. My mom is 66, so she's 65. Yeah, so my mom's 65, you know, she loves what she does. She built her financial planning office with her own two hands. And I want her to be able to, you know, she doesn't want to retire at all. She wants to continue working. But there's work that she doesn't need to do at that office. And I want to be able to shoulder that for her so she can continue to work and run marathons. Like, that's what she does. <laughs> For her was such a badass. <laughs> she treated herself to a marathon. She's like, I'm turning 50. I'm going to run a marathon for my birthday. Like, she's she's a badass lady, you know? Yeah. Um, so I want to be able to, to support her and help her and, you know, my dad so that they can, you know, enjoy, you know, all the time. Wait. All the time, you know? Yeah. I get that, man. I get that. It's It becomes, it's so funny when you're young, it's all about, like, them protecting you and them like making sure you're getting your stuff on and making sure your life is on the right path. And then the older you, we get, the more we start being like, aren't they getting a little old? Maybe we should be trying to help them out a little bit. And that's definitely been in the back of my mind. I'm really, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm going so hard in the paint right now to uh, get these businesses off. Because I really, even though my parents are financially good, mm -hmm. my brother, my younger brother is uh, about almost two years younger than me. He's doing great. His family has two kids and a wife. They are doing great. They are financially good. Um, but I just want to be able to really add that stability to where, like, I can travel as much as I want and write, but also I have enough money just in case one of their things fail, something doesn't work out for them. They can always be like, yo, um, and they would never ask, but I want to be able to just offer, you know, I want to be able, like, you got this if you need it, you know? And so yeah. I get it, man. Family is everything the older you get. Maybe if, not when you're younger, but it's everything when you get older. If I may wax poetic about a story, uh, one of the one of like the old stories I remember from when we first met, or or in the beginning when we met, was we were talking about our parents. You know, you and me both old school and talking about stuff that you know 
our parents did for us and what we want to do for them. I remember distinctly, you know, we were talking one time and you, you told me one of the saddest days for you is when your, your dad sold his boat so that he could have money to, to take care of you guys. And you said, yeah. you know, after I, I make this happen, I'm going to buy my dad another boat. And that always stuck with me, man. You know, because yeah. uh, you didn't just like say it, you know, you like said it and you like, thought about it and like looked off into the distance. While you're, like, <laughs> I'm going to buy my dad. I probably another did boat, do that. You know, and I was like, ooh, that's, <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Because, you know, like old school, you know, you come from the old world. You know, you want to you wanna do right by your parents and show them that like all the work you put into me, it was legit. Yeah. You weren't stupid. You did the right thing. And we fucking they invested made- in us. You're right. They invested in us, man. And it's, it feels weird if you don't pay it, like pay it forward to them. Like if you don't like let them know that they can relax, they can take a breath. They don't have to worry so much, you know? And I think uh, my father actually ended up, so my father, they did, he did really well. He, he uh, sold his boat again, or his uh, previous boat. And then he was uh, still doing okay, but, you know, it was just to make sure that we were okay. Then he goes back and buys another one, and, and he now he has a trailer. Hey, my mom, man, I'm telling you, they part, they, they are enjoying their older their older age lifestyle better than any other couple I've ever seen. My dad is 70. That. My dad I is 70, that. and my mom is 66, and they travel the country in their trailer. My mom, my dad bought a, a huge trailer that can sleep probably like eight people and they got a full kitchen. They have a full bedroom. Um, it's huge. And they just travel across country, set up camp in different places and they just have a good time, man. Like uh, my, my dad loves fishing. So they go fishing a lot and they bring my, my youngest brother and like, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to watch, you know, how in love and how great my parents are. You don't see that a lot, especially with old old school people. Uh, they don't show how much they love their partner. It's a little disgusting sometimes with us being the kids, <laughs> how much they show, how much they love each other in front of us. Because we're adults now, so they don't mind. My dad don't mind, you know, like saying what he feels about my mom out loud. And we'd be like, "Yo, okay, y'all got to keep that to yourself. We're gonna leave in five minutes. Y'all can have the house to yourself. <laughs> like, chill, you know." But yeah, it, but on the outside looking in, if I'm not the person who's uh, not the son of them. Um, it's beautiful. It is really beautiful to watch them develop and grow to grow together even more than they already always had been, and just love it, love on each other. It's 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 amazing. I got lucky, bro. I really got lucky with my parents. I did. Yeah, I mean, it sets a high standard, and you know, like when people ask me, "What do you want to do in your life?" Like, it's kind of ambiguous what I want to do, you know, mm-hmm. for sure. But I do know that I want to achieve more success than my parents did. You know, too. I was born on second base, at least, even as a, as a, as a, as a colored person, you know, mm. I got a lot of shit, you know, uh, I grew up in Huntington beach, so you can imagine what that's like, <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> but still, you know, I feel like I was born in at least on second base, you know, mm. so I got to make it home. Yeah. Like, I'm with you on that, home, bro. That's, that's failure. You know, I feel you. I want to do it, do what I love. I think my dad works, my parents worked so hard doing stuff that they probably did not love yeah. just to get up, just to support our household and make sure that we were okay. And so my, my thing to them is I'm, that's why I work so hard is because everything I'm doing right now is things I love for the most part. And so if I can accomplish, if I can be successful at these things, then I did what my father wanted me to do. I did like the thing that he had to sacrifice his dreams for which is us, mm-hmm. we came out and we, we actually got to chase our dreams and be successful at it. I think it makes him, I think it'll make him really happy once I get to that mountaintop. I've been doing okay, but once I get to the mountaintop, it's going to be, it's going to be a beautiful day. And I'm, de- I'm definitely going to share that with you, my friend. I mean, you know, you, <laughs> you are family to me. I'm going to hold and you all- to that. Just like I'm going to hold you to, you've been talking about your mom's gumbo for like 10 years, bro. You said <laughs> like eight years ago, you were going to get me a cup bro you didn't even promise me a bowl you promised me a cup which is smaller i'm still gonna hold you to that i'm still waiting on that cup of gumbo you got, from your mom. You got it yeah okay so this is the thing i got some book signings coming up soon 
And one of them, we're trying to do in LA because my business partner, the uh, the chef Ar Armando, he is um, he has a food truck down there in Southern California, and so we're going to be doing a book signing down there. So if I can talk my mother into making the gumbo prior to um, to me leaving and going down to do the book signing, I will let you know, and then I'll I'll give you a cup. I'll actually I'll give you a bowl, my friend. Oh I'll yeah, give you a bowl. But that I also want you at the book now. signing anyway. I want you the upgraded book me from a cup to a bowl. Yes, because you've been waiting for it so long. I feel bad. <laughs> you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I look forward to seeing you during the book signing too. If you get, if you have the time when I get down there, I'll tell you the date soon. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to having some family show up. Uh, down oh yeah, there. Man. I'm like, gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna rep and I'm I'll try to get my people out there so we can have a good crowd. And you know, you me, we're gonna go eat some 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 good Korean food when you're down here. Oh hell yes, I'm with it. Let's do it. But guys, this has been Phil Kang. As you can see, he's one of the best people I know, period. And he's just like, he's my guy. And I just wanted to share his story with you guys. Uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful year thus far. And um, until next time, guys, cheers. Cheers, Phil. Cheers, man. And if I could say one last thing to the people that maybe they're watching yeah. this thing for the first time. The thing about Jay Tan that's so awesome versus other people who like wine is... Like wine is like a mystery to a lot of people, you know, and as a person who, who didn't really know about wine, except for like drinking Costco wine, you know, or wine people gave me, you made wine from like a mystery into something that's like, oh, it totally makes sense, you know, even as a lay person. So if anybody watching this channel for the first time, like I highly recommend you watch some of the other stuff because, you know, there's there's wine steal the week. There's wine Wednesdays. There's a lot of content for a lot of people. And, you know, Jay, Jay makes it. He makes it accessible for for anybody of all levels of wine, and I think that's really special in terms of all the different wine people that I've I've watched, I've followed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um it's definitely a special gift that you know not everybody has. So I highly recommend anybody that's watching this to check out some of the other stuff that that Jay has on offer, and also buy the shirts. They're they're super comfortable. For sure. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Hey, cheers, guys. Click. Bro, you're amazing.